So my dad passed away in 2015. We weren't talking and it took a month for his family to track me down. Before I ever knew he was gone, I started hearing from him in heaven. It consumed me. How is communication with the other side even possible? I left my corporate gig, studied with spiritual teachers on every coast, and worked with my angels to figure out the answers. Today, my mission is teaching you how to raise your vibration, shift your thoughts, trust your intuition, develop your unique spiritual gifts, and connect with your loved ones and angels on the other side. Friends, when you have these tools, life really does become heaven on earth. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I am so excited for this interview today, and you're going to be too. We are here with holistic expert Linnea Smith Crawford, and you are just this amazing soul. You have worked in different arenas, but you really made this decision this year to step into what brings you joy and really transform yeah. business in this way. So I'm so excited to have this conversation. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. Linnea, where are you in the U.S.? I'm Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Georgia's been a big one this year. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. It has Coming been out of really Georgia. Big. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing our part, doing our part. So I know that you are really an expert in the field of limiting beliefs. And these limiting beliefs, they so work within us as this resistance force to keep us from our best life, to keep us from being that person, that vision of ourselves that we have to become. What right. you talk about kind of limiting beliefs and just like whatever flows to you. Absolutely. So I'll start by saying everyone experiences limiting beliefs, no matter who wants to, to front or who wants to say they don't. I'm a firm believer that everyone struggles with this and that's why I'm so passionate about it. And so limiting beliefs are basically any thought or belief that stops you, halts you, or limits you from achieving any goal or any aspect of your life that you truly want. It's that pause, it's that second guessing, it's that fear that ultimately stops you from pursuing whatever it is that your heart desires. And so being in the field of mental health and wellness, we know that people think thousands and thousands and thousands of thoughts every day. And would you be surprised to know that majority of those thoughts are negative thoughts? <laughs> and so it is such important work to combat and work against limiting beliefs so people can truly live and embody the life that they want. So, so yeah, that's a little bit about limiting beliefs. <laughs> And this is like such an amazing visual too, because if you imagine, and I've heard like different statistics, I'm not sure if anybody has it nailed down a hundred percent, but I've heard so. like 65 to 85,000 thoughts a day. And of those thoughts that are swimming within you, 85% of those are negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, the numbers aren't super concrete, but that's about how it is. It's way more negative thoughts than it is positive. So a lot of people, when they first come to you, do you see that they have been swimming in this negativity for decades upon decades? Yes, absolutely. And I think the interesting thing is a lot of times people don't even realize that they're having limiting beliefs. They honestly think that they can't achieve the thing that they want to. They they think that they can't achieve the life that they want to. So a big part of the work is identifying and getting them aware that, no, this isn't a truth. This is something that you stored in your mind and decided to believe. And so now we're going to work and push past those thoughts. So what are like the major things? If you could list off like the top three or the top five, what's stopping people from being like, you know what? I am stuck in this cubicle and I don't want to be in this cubicle anymore. And like, I want to do this other thing, but like, that's just a pipe dream. That can't really happen. Yeah. Well, because change is uncomfortable, right? So we get comfortable, we get content, we get complacent in the predictability of our day or the comfort 
for it every day. So I think that's the number one reason why people stay stuck, for lack of a better term, in this cycle of limiting beliefs. Yeah, yeah. So let's go kind of through some examples too. And how yeah. do you see this play out in your life? Because I'm so curious. You have this past history of working with families and in marriage and more like the therapy sector, right? So tell us a little bit about that past and how you found this beautiful way to step into your true authentic self in 2021 and really follow what calls to you. Yes, absolutely. So I am by trade. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Uh, and so for so long, I felt like I had to compartmentalize me. So I was the, ther- the child therapist during the day, the yoga and, med- yoga and meditation instructor for adults at night. And I just felt this feeling of like this back and forth, right? Like this ping pong effect. And I was like, I need some grounding. I need to feel centered. What's going on? You know, have you ever felt that way? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And so this year has really been, I think like for most people, it's been like this collective healing, this collective stillness and this ability to go inward and truly figure out what it is. Uh, you're meant to do and what God has placed in your heart for you to be. And so I realized that I've been doing these things, but doing it in a way that polarizes myself, if that makes sense. And so through the holistic MFT, I am bridging and blending traditional therapeutic strategies and techniques and perspective with these spiritual practices. And so the things that a lot of people still think are taboo, uh, we talked a little bit about how people still have those perspectives, So it's really different for someone who was trained in the Western way of healing to now incorporate more um, indigenous and historical spiritual practices uh, to help people heal. I mean, because I mean, not to go off on a tangent, but a lot of times we have been taught that healing is one dimensional. There's only one way to heal. It's only through the church or only through therapy or only through the spiritual practices. But no, we are multidimensional people. We are multifaceted people and humans. And so that means our healing journey also needs to be multifaceted. And so that is what I'm stepping into, or I have stepped into in 2020 and plan to expand and continue to grow in 2021. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for you with this. So I teach this angel Reiki school where I teach people how to like come into their intuition and bring in their unique spiritual gifts. And it's so fun, but it came to me in meditation years ago where spirit showed me this beautiful visual of like, if you were back in the 1990s and you were doing Reiki or, you know, yoga, your yoga certification, different practices, you'd get your hand slapped if you weren't doing it just precisely so. And what mm-hmm. spirit showed me this day in meditation was this like rainbow effect of that if there's 7.5 billion people on the planet, they're not all going to come to a place of healing using the same modality. Like we need to bridge and fuse and intertwine these different modalities based on the healer and who we are and like our true authentic self. So Mm -hmm. I just so honor you and your journey and just accepting that within yourself, because I think it makes you just so much more of just like this amazing healer when you step into your self. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great feeling. It really is. It's like, it's like the breath of fresh air. Like, you know what I'm saying? To be able to fully embrace and walk in your purpose and in in, in enlightenment, alignment, excuse me. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So let's kind of go into some examples for people who are like, okay, I get what you're talking about. Self-limiting beliefs. I've had some of these beliefs since I was 13, 14 years old. How can we give them some examples of what it looks like at the beginning and what it transitions to through the work? Yes, absolutely. So a really concrete example is using affirmation. So uh, a big part of my work is affirming yourself, affirmations, and speaking things into existence. And so a lot of people don't realize that affirmations actually has an evidence-based background or evidence-based research. And so CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is a very popular and well-researched um, modality in therapy. And so CBT says that if you can change your thoughts, 
you can change your behavior and you can show up in the world the way you want to. And so that's essentially what affirmations are. Affirmations are you speaking the things that you want to cultivate for yourself existence as if it's it's already yours. And that helps train the mind and train the brain to then say, okay, well, this limiting belief that pops, pops up, that's not true because I've been repeating and writing and saying all of these affirmations that come against that limiting belief so consistently that my brain now knows when a limiting belief pops up that oh, there's a red flag. That's no longer true. And what can I say to affirm the thing that my limiting belief is coming against? Yeah. So talk to me about like some of the success examples that you've seen too, like in your work and, and where people have gotten to. Absolutely. So one thing I will say is that you must be consistent. Okay. And I will also say that again, affirmations is not the only way affirmations should be used in addition to other healing modalities to then get you to the place that you want to be. So that's the disclaimer. But a big part in my work, particularly with women and Black women specifically, is that I've noticed that we tend to have an even more negative view of ourselves, you know, because of all the messages that we receive, you know, people of color, we get negative responses often. And so there's even more of those limiting beliefs that come up. And it's almost like women in particular and women of color, we don't really ever take the time to say, wait a second, this image that I'm seeing of myself or this, these messages that I'm internalizing, that's not me. That's not what I want to affirm for myself. And so really just taking time each day and through uh, sessions and healing sessions to really say, hey, this is the thing I want to affirm and believing it and speaking it and writing it and making it a part of their daily practice. I have seen so many women's view of themselves shift. And a lot of them would even say, I didn't know how to create an affirmation for myself. I was so bogged down with all the negative thoughts and feelings and messages that I couldn't even find my voice in all of that. And so that is the success, the success stories by giving people the time, space and opportunity to think about all the things they want to cultivate on a consistent basis and to watch their brain be retrained and their actions, all of that stuff begin to align. Yeah. So I've got like three different ways to go with this. You know, one thing is, I think as a healer doing this work, I don't know, tell me if you see this within your life too, you're very aware of your own energy, right? You're very aware of your Mm -hmm. own thoughts within your head and you have reprogrammed your mind to like see those thoughts. So I, you know, I, I didn't see as much as I should have before George Floyd was murdered. And Mm -hmm. You know, I went through uh, extensive training to go deeper within that within myself. And that was so beneficial. I've got to tell you, since coming out of that course, I have this thought over and over that I didn't realize before, which is I'm so tired. I tell myself that all the time. I'm so tired. And then I think to myself, since I've taken this course, how tired are black women? How tired Mm. are black women of fighting this fight over and over? And it does snap me out of that. I'm so tired where, okay, okay, well, maybe I need some relaxation. Maybe I need to take a step back, but I can keep going and I have to keep going and I should keep going. But I hadn't seen that thought within myself before. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so beautiful that that came up for you. And I think it's it's a truth that a lot of people don't realize. We as Black women, we experience a lot because, again, we're two minorities, right? We're women and then we're people of color. So we've got double the, the negativity coming our way. And so I do appreciate that you have taken the time to really sit with that and do the work and realize that, hey, like if there's this whole group of people that continue to move on. I should be able to move on too. And so I honor and I commend your strength in, in that as well. Yeah, it's just wild how much stuff still continues to come up. Yeah, and yeah, and thank you for that. But I honor you and and I have not realized how hard the journey has been for black women. Do you find as a healer that because I, I feel like some people look at healers like, well, we should just be perfect, right? Like you should have been able to do all of your work and like yes. everything should just be spick and span. But 
from what I've seen and all of the podcast interviews that I've done, this healing journey that we're on isn't just like a year. It's not just five years. It's our entire right. lives. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is. And I think that message is important for the people to know. And it's something that I make sure that I continue to broadcast too. When I get a download or when I have a realization, I like to share it with the community so that they know, hey, I'm still learning too. And I want to learn with you and help you um, on your journey as well. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. So for people who are at home who are like, I don't have time, you know, because that's another big one that you find with clients is the limiting belief or that thought within them is just, I don't have time. How long do affirmations take? That's a really great question. So affirmations can take as little as honestly 30 seconds because it's literally you saying I am whatever the thing you want to cultivate for yourself. And so when people say I don't have time, I usually say, I I understand and I empathize with that, but I feel like there is five minutes in your day that you aren't doing anything or five minutes in your day that you're scrolling on your phone. What if we take those five minutes to tune into yourself, to affirm yourself, to take a deep breath and see how that might shift your day and shift your feelings and your perspective? That's so true. Did you watch that documentary, The Social Dilemma that came out earlier this year? I started it, but I didn't really kind of get into it. I was like, oh, all the bad things. I know, I know, but yeah. I'm trying to avoid it as long as I can. <laughs> well, I'm trying to like find ways where how do you get out of like the scrolling loop, right? Because for me and the the people that I've kind of questioned about this, the way that it seems like this phone is programming your mind is to go into certain apps. And it's almost like you go in, in order, you check all the things. And then like, as soon as you're done checking it, it's almost like you want to go back to it to check all of them again to get the cookies. Right. And so what I did was I I have an iPhone and I decided to like put all of my apps in my library where they're not even on a page. You can't get to it unless you search it. (laughs) I like that. I like that. That way you can't like go in and just go in and, and type in, well, you can type in, you know, what you want to get to, but it's harder and it makes you think about it more. And it gives you like this micro minute to be like, do I really want to be on here? (laughs) Um, Um, Wasting time in this way or using my time in this way, or can I spend that time on healing myself and doing work for myself? Where do you put affirmations? Because I've seen people put them on post-it notes. I've seen people or healers like put them on note cards and then laminate the cards. Where do you put it so that you remember to see it every day? Yes. So a few places. So one is I actually created an an affirmation card deck so that women, black women in particular, just like we were talking about, don't have to do the work and writing it out, right? Let's make it a little bit more easy so that they can access these affirming messages. And that affirmation card deck is called Affirmation is Power, Black Women, You Are Enough. And so that's one way is by purchasing a deck of cards. Oh yeah. So you can purchase that on my website, theholisticmft.com. There are affirmation card decks and also self-love kit. And the self-love kits come with sage, palo santo, and a rose quartz crystal, just to kind of help people on their healing journey and their affirmation journey. So that's one way is purchasing a deck. But yes, sticky notes. Sticky notes are so fun because you can place them anywhere. So sticky notes are great. And I also actually, I should add this too, I've created sticky notes and affirmation journals that aren't specific to Black women that anyone can purchase. And you can find those on the website as well. Some of the affirmation sticky notes say, I am. So what do you want to affirm for yourself? And others say, I release. Like, what do you want to let go of? And so a few fun places to put your affirmation sticky notes. I always tell clients to put them in places that you'll see or you'll pass multiple times a day. So places like the fridge or around your television or in the bathroom. So you want to be able to constantly see those messages, those positive affirmations, but you could also just write them down in a journal. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just, you know, some paper, write your affirmations down that way. And I'm trying to think another way. Oh, another cool thing to do is to create your affirmation, maybe like on 
Word or Google Doc or take a picture of an affirmation online and then make that your screensaver for the day. That's oh. actually one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So that way it's always there because, you know, we always have our phones. So that's a, a good one to always remind ourselves. Oh, I love that. Well, I love that you can get those affirmations on your website too. And we'll put all of that, those links in the show notes so that it's really easy for people to just click on over. If you're listening, you can just go to the show notes right now and click to find those products. I've got a few announcements. This month's winner of the drawing is Rebecca Nagel, who gets one free session with me. Email me a screenshot of your five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts, Google Business, or my Facebook page for your chance to win next month. Details are in the show notes. Friends, in the Angel Membership in May 2021, I'm teaching you a new course on finding your soul's purpose. Why is your soul here? What is your path forward? You'll connect with the Seraphim Angels, Seraphina, and Archangel Raziel to find your answers, create a roadmap plan, and feel confident about your soul's purpose. To join this course live or replay at any time, sign up for the Angel Membership today. Also, a new class of the Angel Reiki School begins May 1st. Join this separate program to develop your unique spiritual gifts and become an Angel Reiki Master. I'm still offering private readings. To book one, sign up for our weekly angel email. Once a month, that email contains a link to book your session online. One more thing, I am loving spending time live with you answering your questions on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Follow me on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new video content. Thanks for your support and sharing this podcast with your people. When you look at affirmations, the way that I started with affirmations was challenging the thoughts that I was having. So if it was like, I can't wake up early, which is a big one that I have struggled with in my life, I cannot wake up early, taking that and reversing it. And what's the exact opposite of that? I can wake up early. Yes. Yes. I ease. Absolutely. And that's, and that's all the affirmation is, right? And that's an exercise I have clients do is I have them write down uh, like your top five to 10 limiting beliefs, right? And then how can you take that limiting belief and turn it into something you can affirm for yourself? So exactly what you said, if one of your limiting beliefs is I can't wake up early in the morning, how can we affirm that you can? I can wake up early in the morning. I can wake up early in the morning with ease. I'm excited to wake up early in the morning. And so that simple exercise is so powerful because it teaches you that you don't have to say yes to that limiting belief, that you can challenge it and you can move forward in spite of it. Yeah. And then, you know, this episode is probably going to come out in February and context does matter right now. And, you know, by February, a lot of people who have had goals for the new year, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to be healthy, not for a number on a scale, just to, you know, make my health a priority. A lot of people get to February and they're like, oh, I didn't do it. Yeah. Right. Give give some words of wisdom to those who are in February 2021 and they're like, man, the last couple of weeks, I haven't done what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. So I would say extend yourself some grace, right? Everyone's goal isn't going to be accomplished in one month. Take your time, pace yourself and really begin to notice what is the the feeling or the need behind the goal, right? What is the the reason behind the weight loss or the reason behind wanting a new relationship and really tap into that feeling 
and then really assess, is it truly something I want to change the way that I think I want to change it? A lot of times we set these goals for ourselves, but we forget about the feeling that we're trying to um, embrace with these goals. So I would say extend yourself some grace. It's only February. You're only two months in. You can still get back on that horse once you assess if it's truly a goal that you want to accomplish for yourself. Perfect. How does feeling tie in with affirmations and truly creating change within your life? Yes. So we are emotional beings, right? We're beings that feel and need to express our feelings. And so one of the things that I find to be very powerful about affirmations is not only do you need to speak the thing that you want to cultivate for yourself, but you need to feel the feelings that will come along with it because that's what makes it real. So if one of the things you want to cultivate for yourself is more confidence, right? So I want to be really confident. Well, how will you feel when you're more confident? Will you will you feel happier? Will you feel more grounded? Will you feel more grateful? And to really take a moment to just close your eyes and experience what it's going to be like to feel grateful, to feel that joy, to feel that happiness. And that helps the thing uh, manifest. I think feelings are a really big part of manifesting anything that you want in this life. That's awesome. I'm wondering, talk to me about your work with relationships and the way that you're moving in 2021. And maybe we can dive into a little bit of your relationship expertise. And if someone's goal is to better their relationship in 2021, how they can work towards that as well. Absolutely. So with my work with women and couples, I think the relationship to self actually is the most important, even if you're in a marriage or an actual relationship. It's the relationship to self that really helps the other relationship grow. For a lot of couples, and even for myself, being pretty young and married, my husband and I got married when we were 25. So you're taught that, okay, you become one, right? You and this person morph together and everything, you do everything together. When that's really not the case, you have to be two whole individuals, right? Coming together to create a life with each other. So my biggest advice is for people in relationships to take some time to get to know themselves, get to know their love languages, get to know why they respond the way they do to certain things, because the inner work is what's going to help the relationship thrive. 100%. You know, it's so fascinating to when somebody comes into my office and says, I, it's all this other person's fault, right? Like, Mm -hmm. if they were just more attentive, or if they just did this, or if they just did that, it's totally a flag to me that they have work to do on their own individual feeling of wholeness within themselves. Because when we do take that focus off of the other person and put it on ourselves and say, okay, what do I need to give myself? What do I need myself? How can I be there? My mom used to use this analogy when we were kids of like, your life is this whole pie and your husband is just one slice of the pie and your home is a slice of the pie and your pets are a slice and your kids are a slice. I don't know why I put pets before kids, but that's interesting. Um, (laughs) Your friends, your hobbies, your work, you know, it's all just one slice. And it's so wild how what our parents say actually echoes to us in future years, but it so does. Because when I'm feeling like I need time with my kid, or I need to spend more time on work, I really come back to this visual of this pie and think, it's just a slice. If I give Mm. too much to it, the entire wheel is off balance. I love that analogy. Kudos to your mom. Shout out to your mom for that amazing (laughs) analogy. Oh my goodness. I just did a podcast episode about her for December, like a Christmas gift to her. And you know, the biggest gift that she gave to me was talking to me like I was an adult, even when I was very young and just not seeing youngness. Yeah. Yeah. Love her. Yes. I love that. And such a great reminder that your life is full of lots of different slices, right? And to give the attention, the amount of attention it deserves, because a lot of times, similar to like what you were saying, 
we take one slice and make it the whole pie. And then we wonder why our life is out of whack. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit. I know that you've got some programs coming up in 2021. What is it that you dive into with people with your courses with your programs? Absolutely. Yes. So the Holistic Healing Collective and the Holistic Healing Circle will be releasing in 2021. And so holistic healing is basically the blending of therapeutic and mental health practices with spiritual practices. And so in these programs, people are learning to protect their peace, cultivate joy and love themselves deeper through a blending of several modalities. So group therapy check-ins, sound healing, meditations, breath work, sessions, yoga flows, affirmation-based activities, and journal prompts. And the goal is to just help people cultivate the life that they want and manifest their heart's uh, deepest desires and ultimately show up in this world as the best versions of themselves. I love that. That's so perfect. Talk to me about protecting your peace because a lot of people will come to me and they'll talk to me about like, Julie, I have this coworker and I know that they're just shooting me bad vibes. And how do I protect my energy? And, you know, there's different methods that different healers give. I'm curious to hear yours and, and how you protect that peace and that energy within yourself. Yes. So if I'm working with a client, I'll definitely say that I meet them where they are and help them cultivate a plan that will ultimately help them protect their peace. So it can range from, you know, sound healing meditations to breath work, to processing what it means to protect your peace. But from a personal perspective, me protecting my peace is me protecting my time, right? So being in control of what I do with my time. I'm a Virgo. I don't know if I've said that. And so Virgos, we like to be like, you know, we like to be in control. We like to have the things in order. So for me, protecting my peace is being able to wake up in the morning at my own pace, do my meditation and really tune into myself, tune into my higher self and tune into God before I tune into the rest of the world. And that helps me be able to handle all the chaos and handle all of the emotional dumps and all of the things that come up in my work with people. So that's how I protect my peace. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Well, sometimes I feel like two people think that they have to protect their peace all the time. And I think it's kind of twofold, right? Where you can ask that your energy just kind of be surrounded and protected. And you can ask it once and have confidence and faith that that carries throughout. But then there is this, I've talked to my audience before about how like energy, how I see energy working, where like it radiates out from your soul, but in the outer layers of your auric field, it's like, that's where all stuff starts to flow in throughout your day. So if you open up and you've got 10 text messages and 14 emails and whatever it is, this is energy that is starting to work within your field. And if you don't work with it, and if you don't protect that piece, then you're going to feel overwhelmed and you're not working with that energy that you're really swimming in. Whereas like when you're talking about protecting your time, like that's the most beautiful one, because when you have boundaries around your time, you're really saving and storing up your energy in different ways where you have the energy to do everything that you need to do. Absolutely. Yes. And I love that because a lot of times people wake up and that's the first thing they do. They check the phone, they check the emails, and then they wonder why their peace is disturbed. You have to be able to wake up in a state where you can just tune into yourself, tune into your higher self, take a couple of deep breaths, and then attend to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Or even I've been trying to hold off until 9am. 9am. If I can hold off until nine, then I get through my morning without worrying about that email that I got that I have to work on or worrying about like the huge to do list that I have for the day. Yeah, Yeah, it can be overwhelming. That's so beautiful. I'm wondering too, when it comes to like relationships, there's been a lot that's been going on for 2020 
well, in 2020, we had a lot going on with relationships and people who were just so stuck at home together. And you saw this either a coming more close together or kind of a working through a lot of issues because you're in such close proximity to one another. As a, a marriage therapist, as somebody who works with couples, what do you kind of forecast and see for 2021? Where are people at with their relationships? Where kind of does the collective need to dive into more? Yeah, I think 2020 definitely taught us or showed us if the relationships we were in were right for us. Because, I mean, never has anyone really experienced that much time with their significant other, with their family, like lockdown was real. (laughs) So I think that in 2021, it's about expounding upon this new knowledge of your partner. Many marriages are not the same from 2019 to 2021. There's definitely a clear shift because of the year of 2020. And so I think it's about finding this new, this freshness, finding this new perspective or this new love or joy for your partner, because likely, likely your partner has shifted and changed just like you in this 2020 season. So that would be my biggest thing. Approach your relationship with fresh eyes, be excited to try new things with each other, especially now, hopefully by February, 2021, we're, 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 we're on the, the, the good part of, of the pandemic and we can open our lives up a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> I love that. For couples who have been together so long, and maybe there's a mundane energy there because they've been together, they work well together, but they've been inside for so long together. How do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it growing and growing together? Yeah. So going back to that part where I spoke about going inward and knowing yourself more, So allowing your partner and yourself time apart. So going to separate spaces, working on things that feed just you, and then coming back to the collective with a fresh sense of creativity. Because when you nurture the creative inside you, and everyone has a creative aspect, it doesn't look the same, but we all have creativity. When you take time to nurture that within yourself, You can approach then a relationship or a joint partnership with fresh eyes and say, oh my gosh, look at this really cool thing I learned in my time alone. And now you have something new to talk about just because you gave each other a little bit of time alone. Yeah, I forget where I heard it, but some celebrity was talking about that, like not wanting to be scrolling so much on the internet, but really being creating content themselves. And I thought that that was such like a fresh perspective because it's so true. You you have this finite amount of time. You only have so much time and so much energy. How do you want to be spending it? And I really do see 2021 as kind of, well, and 2022. I think we're going to see a lot of this too, as just this complete rebirth. And, Mm -hmm. and there is a lot of creation energy there. So kind of going in and really seeing, like you said, to your point, what you're interested in and just using that as your breadcrumb trail to find different ways to be creative within the world. Absolutely. And I'm excited to see this rebirth. I agree with you. 2021, 2022, we'll see all of this creative energy really bubble up. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. Oh, any other like things or insights coming to you for 2021? You know, I think it's all about being intentional. And honestly, this is the question that I asked myself this morning, actually, which I think would be really helpful in 2021 is what are you willing to let go of? Or what are you willing to release to make room for your manifestations? Mm -hmm. What are you willing to let go of in order to make room for abundance? And so I think doing everything with intention is going to help us do that, right? Being able to release so that we can receive. You know, as you said that, I got this total vision of just like the vibration increasing and increasing on earth. And if we lived like that, where everything was done with this intention, wow, that would be a different planet. Wouldn't it? It'd be a beautiful place. (laughs) A beautiful place. Yes. So speaking of like 2021, what can 
you know, we've gone through a lot too with the discussion of how can white women support black women? And I want to take it one step further and ask a second question too. How can white healers support black healers? We've gone through a lot in 2020. We've grown a lot in 2020. Where are we at now? And how how can white women support black women? And how can we support black healers? Yes, thank you for asking that question. I think a couple of ways, there's several ways that you can support Black women and Black healers. One, you can purchase the products and purchase the programs, even though they're sacred spaces and you might not be able to attend. But many Black women and Black women healers, we, we're just now coming into the space. You've seen so many Black healers arise in the, the last couple of years because so much of that wasn't accessible to us. And so remembering that we are here too, and you can support us by purchasing products, purchasing tickets to events, but even just reposting, right? Letting your audience know that, okay, this is out there. This healer is doing this thing. If you're interested, take a look, but also inviting us in. So just like we're sitting here having this conversation and we're realizing that there's lots of things that we connect on. I think that's important. More collaboration, I think is the biggest piece. Like Let's have more conversations. Let's invite each other to the table. Let's do more uh, collaborative work together to show our communities that we can live and thrive in this industry together and that we both have different perspectives, but they're both important. So I think those are all the ways that we can be supported. I love that. You know, I'm not familiar with all of the like right ways to do things on social media. (laughs) I'm 38. By the time this airs, I will be 39. But I feel ancient sometimes when it comes to social media. Is it okay to repost another healer's thing, give them full credit and say, go over, check this out, you know, check out their site and check out all the great work that they're doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's important that with the repost comes that message so that it's clear that you're supporting this person. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yay. I am so excited for all of the beautiful, amazing work that you are doing in this world. Linnea, please tell the audience again, like your website, where they can find you if you're on social. And again, we'll include all of those notes in the show notes below. Absolutely. Yes. So you can learn more about me and my work at theholisticmft.com. And you can follow me on all social platforms at Linnea S. Crawford. Yay. So I know you have to run today, but uh, do you want to do a angel story? Because we share like a second, it's just a little mini, but uh, I don't know if you have like a story of your like, that was not me. That was totally spirit coming through or God coming through, or just, you know, when the divine kind of winks at us. Yeah, I think there have been a few times in my life where I feel like spirit has stepped in, God has stepped in and, and done the work. I don't know if I have like a specific example, but I think that honestly, through my spiritual awakening and Saturn return, that's that's where, where I'm at right now. So you understand what goes on there. I think that a lot of my time just sitting with self and sitting with God, I've realized that a lot of the messages that I've received aren't me. It's, it's not me that gets these messages and it's not me that gets these insights. It's definitely spirit working through me. So I guess that, does that answer your question? Just having that time to sit and have spirit move through me in that way. That is so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Well, blessings to you. I'm so excited. Thank you. You're doing, thank you for blessing us with your time today. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. Of course. Of course. Keep in touch. All right. Bye, Julie. Nice to meet you. Bye. You too. Beautiful souls, I'm so excited to announce that my book on angels and how they're working miracles in your life will be available on Amazon fall of 2021. If you're listening on or after fall of 2021, check it out. Friends, if you'd like to work with me each week, my angel membership program is perfect for you. You can join at any time and you get access to past courses. In 2021, I'll be teaching you about a new topic each month. 
We started the year in February with a course on oneness and raising your vibration. March is angel communication, how to hear your angels. April is trusting your intuition. May is knowing your soul's purpose. June is working with Archangel Raphael to learn self-energy healing techniques and Chakras 101. July is rewriting the stories you've been holding on to. August is all about rewiring your mind to move past blocks. September is energetically working through ancestral trauma. October is working with your inner child and Archangel Michael. November is a guide to being an empath. Then we're rounding out the year with a course in December that helps you connect with your loved ones on the other side to help you deepen your personal connection with them. And in January 2022, we'll be back with a whole new course on manifestation and co-creation. You get all of this live group access to me, two new pre-recorded Reiki healings, an advance notice to book a session with me when you're an angel member. Sign up for the angel membership anytime. If you're listening in 2022, please know that we're planning to add new content each month. For details and to sign up, view the show notes below. Friends, the only thing that's not included in the Angel Membership right now is the Angel Reiki School, where you learn to develop your unique spiritual gifts. Whereas the Angel Membership is about your awakening journey and your personal spiritual growth, the Angel Reiki School, on the other hand, certifies you as an Angel Reiki Master Teacher and teaches you the art of energy healing and bringing through messages for your clients. Friends, if you're feeling called to the Angel Reiki School, it's because the souls you're here to help on earth, well, they're omnipresent piece of them. You know, they're higher selves on the other side. That's what's behind you, pushing you, fueling you to become who you're meant to be. Because when you do, they know your work will shift the trajectory of their life here. That's what I mean when I say you have big, big purpose in this lifetime. A new class of the Angel Reiki School starts on the first of each month. Speaking of the Angel Reiki School, we're going to need about 800 volunteers this year. We select volunteers from people who've written a five-star positive review and emailed us a copy. That way, we have a way of contacting you for your free volunteer session. Many of you have asked if I'm still booking sessions, and the answer to that is yes. I love, love, love my sessions with you. We have a new system where we send out an email once a month with a link to my calendar for you to book online. It's really easy. All you have to do is sign up to be on my email list on my website, theangelmedium.com. I've been spending a ton of time going live with you on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and I'm having a blast with it. Join me over on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new content, teaching videos, and actual video footage of these podcast episodes. Friends, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much for being part of this community and listening to this show. I truly feel that this is your show and the angel's show, and I just feel so blessed to be a part of it. You're the most supportive community a podcaster could have. I pray for you every day. If you have a special prayer request, you can submit it through my website homepage and I'll be praying for you personally. Now for the oneness meditation, which is the last five minutes of every episode. And as you do this meditation, you'll raise your vibration and the vibration of the planet.
Friends, what I want you to do is to just get into a relaxed position. Uh, if you are driving, operating machinery, need to concentrate, then this meditation is not for you. But anyone who is able to focus their attention on it, please join me. Friends, I want you to start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to imagine that your socks, your shoes are off and that your bare feet are able to connect with the soil of the earth. And down through the bottom, the soles of your feet are these large roots that go down far and wide into the earth. Those roots go down far and wide, anchoring you into the earth as if you were a tree yourself. And up through those roots comes this beautiful, yummy, tingly energy. It begins to tingle at the tip of your toes. I want you to allow this yummy, tingly energy to just dance up over your feet, around your ankles. Feel this yummy, tingly energy as it moves up over your calves, your shins, all the way up to your knees. Feel this energy at your knees and allow it to move up the thighs, the hamstrings all the way up to the sides of the hips. I want you to allow this energy to move from the hips up to the base of your spine, the base of your stomach. And I want you to feel this energy as it climbs up the spine and the stomach all the way up until it reaches your heart. surrounding the outside of your heart, filling the inside of your heart. Notice how your entire body comes into a gentle state of ease. Allow this energy to move up into the shoulders, into the neck. Feel it as it fills your entire head front to back, side to side, top to bottom. And then feel this energy as it moves through the hair follicles on the top of your head so that you feel this yummy tingliness two inches to ten feet or higher above the top of your head. Friends, you might feel like there's a string above your head lifting you up towards the sky. You might feel an airy floatiness. You might feel an expansive spaciousness. What I want you to do from here is imagine that there is this large opening at the crown of your head. It's the size of a cereal bowl, right? And I want you to imagine that it extends upwards towards heaven and that God sends this loving, peace-filled oneness energy. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's bliss, it's ease, it's grace. And God just sends this energy through the crown of your head. It moves through your head, down through your neck, down through your shoulders, and it starts to this God energy starts to pull around your heart, within your heart. And I just want you to feel that for a moment. And I want you to just tap in and notice. I want you to notice that your heart, your physical heart, is one with your body. And 
I want you to notice that your heart and your body are one with the air surrounding you. And I want you to notice that your heart, your body, the air surrounding you are one with all life here on earth. All plants, all people, all animals, all life on earth. And now notice how your heart, body, air surrounding you, all life here on earth are connected to everything, everywhere. Friends, did you notice how your body got more expansive, your energy got more expansive, and you could feel out into your auric field, you could feel out into the energy of the world, into the energy of everything, everywhere. Friends, that is oneness, and you can carry oneness with you in your everyday. I don't want you to stop here. I don't want you to open up your eyes. I want you to continue this meditation and to see that surrounding you are angels. You have guardian angels around you. You have cherub angels holding the space open for you to get into oneness at any time. You have archangels working with you in every area of your life. You have loved ones on the other side. See them. See them in detail, friends, because you seeing them in detail is the exact same thing as you going to them on the other side, knocking on their door, asking them to spend time with you. They love you so incredibly much. They want to spend time with you. They want to develop that relationship with you. When they're there, you're here. I know it's different, but you can still have that beautiful, incredible relationship. All of these beings, your angels, your guides, your loved ones on the other side, they form your spirit team who's always working to guide you, direct you, protect you. Friends, what I want you to do is just take some time with them right here, right now. What they want you to know is that they are working with you all the time. What they want you to know is that they are sending you signs and symbols to show you that they're next to you. Friends, they ask you to see that they are bringing in gift after gift after gift through your heart chakra to bless your life with miracles. Friends, it's your job to remain open, to believe, and to trust that they are working miracles in your life. Friends, I love you. They love you so incredibly much. Stay open and know, believe, trust, have faith, know like you know like you know that they are working with you always. See you here next time. Have a blessed day.